Okay, for this video, I wanted to go over the bonus depreciation recapture rules for vehicles that are used in your trader business. Um, I've already done one video on this before. I'll put a link to it below, uh, which covers how to actually compute the depreciation um, and take the deduction on your return. So this is a second part to this uh, video series where we look at situations where you have to actually recapture the amount of depreciation if business use changes. So most of the time when we think about recapture for depreciation expenses because we actually sell the asset. Um, in this case, that's not what's happening here. What's happening here is we still have the vehicle, uh, but because our business use percentage fell below 50%, now that it's predominantly a personal use vehicle and not mostly for business, the federal tax rules require you to recapture what is constituted to be uh, excess depreciation expense. Okay, So I've got a few slides in front of us, three slides with uh, the rules and the fact patterns we're going to look at, and then some PDFs as well. Um, I've got a sample S-Corp return here that we'll be going through and showing how to report the amount of depreciation recapture. Um, and then some instructions here for the 4797, the um, recaptured amount is reported on this form. Um, and then a few publications here. Publication 946 is very helpful. It's, it covers um, how to compute the excess depreciation, the recaptured amount. And then Pub 463 is also a good reference uh, material uh, just for travel expenses, business um, related use of your vehicle uh, and those related items. Okay, so let's go back to the slides and we'll start working through this. So um, these, so I'm just going to recap some of the rules that we covered on the first video. So these are the relevant code sections for depreciation, uh, well, bonus depreciation that is, right? So under 168K K here, <clears throat> you can um, deduct 100% a property placed into service between these time periods, right? So bonus depreciation used to be 50%, um, and then the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act increased it to 100 for property placed into service during those periods, okay? But there is a dollar limitation on certain types of vehicles, right? So passenger automobiles, you can't deduct 100% of the cost, right? And so the little uh, trick to this is, well, if you get a vehicle that weighs over a certain amount, it actually doesn't it doesn't classify as a passenger automobile, automobile so you can deduct 100% of the cost um, under the bonus depreciation rules, right? And so the standard is a 6,000 uh, pound vehicle. So if you have a, a vehicle that is greater than 6,000 pounds, then you can use 100% bonus depreciation on the entire amount if the vehicle is used at least 50% for business. Okay, so the rules are, you know, you have to purchase the vehicle weighing more than that amount. Um, the vehicle can be bought any time during the year and placed into service any time during the year. So even right up until the end of the year, you can still do this. Um, and then the vehicle has to be used at least 50% for business. If it's below that amount, you cannot use the bonus depreciation. And the way that the tax code measures uh, business use is by the number of miles driven. So you have to look at miles driven for business purposes versus the total. Now, for, if you have vehicles that are more than 50% used for business but less than 100, you prorate the depreciation amount. So for example here, if we had an escort bought a, a forerunner in 2019, uh, the John, the owner, he drives it 2,000 miles uh, during those two months, um, ending in uh, December 31, 2019, right? So the last two months of 2019, he drove 2,000 miles. 1,500 was for business, 300 for commuting, 200 for personal use. The business portion is going to be 75%, right? So 1,500 miles divided by the total, right? So it's very simple math. So that what that means is of the 62,000, although um, he's eligible for bonus appreciation and the cap is 100, because the business use is only 75%, he is limited to this amount, the 46,500 as bonus depreciation because the other 25% is personal, right? So personal use of business assets is not deductible. Okay, very, very important to remember. So what's the uh, trick that a lot of people use? And this does work, this is legitimate. In order to make sure that you get 100% use, many companies will wait until the very end of the year to purchase that asset. So if we look at this example here, um, again, we have the same S Corp, bought the 2019 Forerunner for the same amount, <laughs> 
but they bought it right at the end of the year, <clears throat> right? So December 26, 2019, a little post-Christmas shopping. So John, uh, same thing. He's, he's the 100% owner of the company. He's going to use it for um, you know, his business purposes. John's accountant tells him that he, um, if he uses the vehicle at all for personal use, it's going to require a proration, right? This example up here. So after John buys the vehicle, he only drives at 50 miles for, for business use. So just those last few days of the year, he goes to see clients, right? So it's all business use and he leaves the vehicle at the office, right? So there's no commuting miles on it. There's no personal miles on it. The odometer shows that, look, I drove 50 miles those last few days of the year. They were all business. So his um, business use of the asset really is 100%, right? No commuting miles, no personal miles, 100% business use. So the company is able to use 100% bonus depreciation on the 62K. So for this business, in uh, 2019, they wrote off the entire thing uh, for the 2019 tax year, right? Perfect. So if it sounds too, too good to be true, well, it might be, okay? And this is the point of this video here. Although you were able to write off the whole thing in that 2019 year, there could potentially be bonus depreciation recapture if there becomes you know, any personal use, commuting use, and we fall below that 50% threshold. Okay, so let's go to the next slide here and we'll talk about the recapture rules. So what are the recapture rules? If the business use falls below 50% during any subsequent year, right? So we legitimately wrote off 100% in 2019, uh, but we still have to track our usage going forward, right? So if the business use falls below 50% in any subsequent year, the business is required to record depreciation recapture for the excess depreciation over straight line. Um, and this is found in code section 280 cap F B2. The depreciation recapture amount is calculated and reported on the 4797. And then the income inclusion goes on the other ordinary income line. So if we look at, uh, I'm gonna go to the 1120S very quickly here, just so we can kind of get our bearings on this piece. Um, but firstly, if I look at the balance sheet here, <clears throat> Oh, sorry. Okay, so the balance sheet per book. So we'll see here the beginning numbers, right, which are carried over from 2019. We can see here the vehicle, right? So build, buildings and other depreciable assets. That was the $62,000 vehicle that we bought. And you'll note that the accumulated depreciation is the same amount, 62K. And that's because in 2019, we did, we, you know, wrote off the entire thing, right? We took a depreciation expense for the whole thing. So it's fully depreciated rolling into the 2019, or sorry, the 2020 tax year, which is what we've got here in front of us. Okay, now the 4797. Now, normally uh, this is used when, right, you sell business property, right? Uh, but it is also used uh, for these cases where we have recapture amounts, right? Involuntary conversions and recapture amounts Sections 179 and 280 cap F, right? That's what we're working with here. So the 4797, uh, all the way at the end in part four is where we have the recapture section, right? So this is what we're gonna be working with. Recapture amounts under 179 and 280 cap F when business use drops to 50% or less, okay? So we'll talk about how to compute these numbers later, but these are the sections of the forms that we need to pay attention to. Okay, so let me go back to the slide here. So let's look at our fact pattern here. And uh, we've got all the numbers, so there's a lot of numbers, a lot of mileage numbers, but we'll go through this first, and then we'll uh, flip over to the um, the return and see how these numbers end up on uh, on the forms themselves. So we have the S Corp again purchased in uh, a 2019 Toyota 4Runner at the end of the year, right, December 26, 2019. Um, and this is the same fact pattern that we just looked at in the previous slide, right? So because it was 100% business use for the tax year. Uh, the company was able to use bonus depreciation of 62000 and expense the entire vehicle. So we wrote the whole thing off in 2019. Now we move into 2020. So for the 2020 tax year, the business must still track the vehicle usage. So we need to track business miles, commuting miles, personal miles, um, and then report those values on the 4562. So if we look at the 4562, this is where we report depreciation and amortization um, of, of existing property and then new additions for the year. Um, if we go to page two here, 
for the listed property section for the vehicles. Um, section B, information on use of vehicles, these are where we report the miles, right? You've got to do this every single year, right? Now remember in the first year for 2019, business miles was 50, total commuting was zero, zero, so total miles was 50, so we had that 100% business usage. Um, so column C for the 2019 um, form 4562 would show 100% business usage. So that's why we got to write off the whole thing. Now you notice we're at 30%, right? So we've got some different mileages, uh, mileage numbers to work with here, which is why we have this lower than 50% threshold that was reached. So let's go back to the slide and continue with the fact pattern here. Okay. So the company must monitor the percentage of business to use to see if there is any depreciation recapture, right? That's the problem we're presented with here. John uses the vehicle all year for a combination of business, personal, and commuting miles. So John drove the following miles using the Forerunner for the 2020 tax year. Okay, so here's the fact patterns we got here. John's personal home is 15 miles from his office. He uses the vehicle to commute to work every single day, so he has a 30 mile round trip for commuting miles. If John goes to work 250 days during the year, right? So let's say five days a week times, you know, uh, 50 day or five days a week times 50 weeks, right? So he takes two weeks off for vacation. That's gonna be 250 days during the year. Um, so his total commuting mileage is gonna be 7,500 miles for the year, right? So 30 miles round trip times 250, okay? Makes sense, right? Now, John also made multiple business-related trips each week during the year. He had to frequently leave his office and drive to clients to meet in person. So the miles driven between his office and the client's offices are going to be business-related miles, right? Those are business miles. That's fine. So he looks at his mileage logs, and he, he, and he counts them all up, and he sees that he drove a total of 3,640 business miles during 2020. Okay, so we got 7,500 commuting, 3,640 uh, for business. Now, here's the last component too. John commuted to and from work using the Forerunner, and if he's commuting to and for, from work with the same vehicle, then what that leads us to believe is that he has the vehicle available at his house after work hours and on the weekends, right? Because he's using it to commute to work. He's not just leaving the vehicle at his office. So he occasionally uses the vehicle to drive his kids to school, soccer practice, run other errands. So John looks at the odometer, readings at the start and end of the year and what he notes is that okay at the start of the year I had 50 miles on it now at the end of the year I got 12,183 so the total miles driven are going to be 12,133 miles okay so that's the total miles driven during the year and with a little simple arithmetic what we can find is that his pure personal miles are 993 Right, so 12,133 is the total. If we subtract out the commuting is 7,500, and then we subtract out the 3,640 for the business, we get 993 personal miles. Now, how do we compute the business use percentage? Well, it's simply taking the amount of business miles driven divided by the total for the year. So 3,640 business miles divided by 12,133, 30%. Okay, very simple. Um, now, immediately, this is the problem we have. Our business use fell below 50%. So now we've got a recapture issue. Okay. So, and, um, and uh, just to know, um, this is a very common fact pattern, right? A lot of um, business owners, they use that company car more for personal use and commuting than, you, than they think, right? And these are the rules. I mean, it, you have to track these amounts. You have to be um, you have to be compliant with the federal tax rules, or else you know if you're ever audited, you're going to be in some serious trouble. Okay, so let's move on to slide three. Here's how we calculate the recapture amount. So recapture uh, calculation, what we're looking to do is calculate the amount of excess depreciation that needs to be recaptured, and then we recompute the amount of depreciation going forward using the straight line method. That's effectively what we're doing here. Um, so the, the calculation can be found in Pub uh, 946. Um, so if I flip over there really quick, just so we can um, take a look at that. So 946, um, this covers all, all, how to, all the rules around how to depreciate property, right? Obviously the tax code has the standards, but these publications are a little uh, more easier and kind of reader friendly. So um, 
definitely recommend using these um, to kind of go through these examples. So if we flip down, uh, where is it? Ah, okay, here we go. Recapture of excess depreciation. So here's the rule. And they've got some examples here for us. And they've also got some worksheets uh, that you can look at as well to help you out. But um, the recapture rule is simply if you use li listed property more than 50% in a qualified business use in the year you place in service, you must recapture excess in the first year you use it 50% or less, right? So what they're saying there, again, you know, if you had listed property more than 50% in one year, and then every single year after that, you have to calculate the business use. And if it falls below 50%, you've got an excess depreciation recapture. So excess is the depreciation that was taken for the year you first put it in service, right? Minus the depreciation that should have been allowed if um, using the straight line method, right? So to determine the amount of line two, you must refigure the depreciation using straight line method and the ADS recovery period. Okay, so straight line is, is just that. It's an equal amount um, and the recovery period for the listed property in this case is gonna be five years. Okay, so let me go back to the slide here. Um, and we'll start diving into how to calculate the recapture amount. So um, in 2019, so the first piece here, depreciation allowed, right? So in 2019, the total of 62,000 in bonus depreciation was deducted on the full purchase price. 100% was allowed in that case because the qualified business use was 100%, okay? So if we start to build out the 4797, let me go up to the 4797. Okay, so this is where we're reporting the recapture amount, part four, Recapture amounts to ADF B2, right? So line 33, the section 197 expense or depreciation allowed in the prior years, right? So in our case, it was $62,000, right? So we enter 62,000 because that's the amount that was deducted in those prior years, okay? So that's the first piece. <clears throat> then what John must do is you must recalculate the 2019 depreciation expense using the straight line method. Right, so if the vehicle is depreciated straight line over a five year period, and you also consider the half year convention for the first year's place in service. So what does that look like? Well, uh, to calculate the straight line method, you simply take the cost divided by the recovery period. So we have 62,000 divided by five years. So it's 12,400 per year. Uh, but remember the first year that the property is placed in service, you use the, the half year convention, you take 50% of that amount, right? So the half year convention, essentially it says that when you place property into service, um, no matter when you put it into service during the year, whether it's January 15th, December 1, June 30th, whatever, you always assume it was placed in the middle of the year. And so you take one half of that first year depreciation. So we would take 50% of the 12,400 and $6,200 is gonna be the first year's amount of straight line depreciation expense. Now in 2019, the business use was 100%. So we can take 100% um, times the 6,200. And so the full 6,200 dollars is going to be uh, the depreciation amount for 2019 under the straight line method. And so that is why if we look at the 4797, the recomputed depreciation for that previous period or periods, depending on how many years you, you, you've already had the qualified business use, is going to be $6,200. So the recaptured amount is the difference, right? Remember, it's the first amount minus the second. So we've got $55,800 in depreciation recapture, okay? Now, um, John, where does he report this figure? On the 49, or 47.97, obviously that's the first place. And then the net recaptured amount is ultimately flowing through um, to the tax return as other ordinary income. So if we go back to the 1120S, that's the income inclusion, 55,800. And we see that number pop up on page one. So page one income here, line five, um, other income lost, line five, 55,800, okay? Notice how line four is net gain or loss, 4797, but that's only line 17, right? So we still have a 4797 reporting requirement, but the amount is actually reported on line five. 
So that's the income inclusion, right? So and the math here makes sense, right? Last year we deducted $62,000. Now we've failed the business use test. So we have to recapture an amount that was deducted in the prior year um, that exceeds the straight line depreciation expense that, that would have been recorded in that prior period. So that's where we get the $55,800 figure, okay? Now, <clears throat> Here's where we calculate the current year straight line depreciation expense. So remember, well, effectively what we've done is we've reversed what happened at the prior period. So now the basis is, um, the, the, the asset now has basis again. And so we have to compute the depreciation expense going forward now that business use is below 50%. So the business use of the asset now is only 30%, right? So if I go back to the 4562, So part five, listed property, right? The forerunner now drops down to line 27, right? 26 is when you have property used more than 50% in business. Lines 27 is where you report less than 50%. So we've got our forerunner down here, 2019 forerunner. It was placed into service on December 26, 2019, right? That's fine. It's the same as last year. The business use is 30%. And how do we get that 30? Again, we had to take the information from the mileage. 3640 in business miles, 7500 in computing, 993 in personal miles, total miles was 12,133. So 3640 divided by 12,133 is this 30% business use. So our cost basis, 62,000. The basis for depreciation is the business use percentage. So 30% times 62,000 is $18,600. And then the recovery period is going to be five and the method was straight line half year. Okay. So the depreciation deduction is going to be $2,756. How did I get that figure? Let's go back to the slide. So in order to calculate um, the second year depreciation, or sorry, let me start at the top here. So business use again is 30%. The appreciable basis is going to be 18,600, right? We just saw that on the 4562 the 62,000 times 30. Now you can't appreciate an asset to the extent it's used for personal purposes, right? So that's that's always the mantra here. Um, any personal use cannot be depreciated, so that's why the depreciable basis for business use is only this 18,600, even though we paid 62 grand for the car. So of the 18,600, the first year straight line depreciation amount was 6,200, right? Remember, that's the amount that was still remaining on the 4797. So if we subtract 6,200 from 18,600, there's $12,400 worth of depreciable basis remaining that can be depreciated. So to calculate the second year depreciation amount using the straight line method, we divide 12,400 by 4.5. Now, why do we use 4.5? 4.5 is used as the denominator when calculating second year depreciation for five-year property under the half-year convention. So you can find all these rules if you go to publication uh, 946 or 463 and 946, they will um, outline how to calculate uh, depreciation expense using any recovery period, so or, or recovery method rather. So straight line, um, straight line, double declining balance, you name it. So these are the rules that are outlined um, in the publications and in the code, right? So. Uh, 4.5 is going to be used as the denominator. So we have um, the remainder 12.4 divided by 4.5 is 27.56. Okay, so that's the amount that's uh, depreciation expense for the period. That's going to be reported on 4.562. All right, so let me go back to 27.56, right, the depreciation deduction. And so that amount you will see on page one. Line 14, right? So depreciation on line 14 is 2756. Um, and then if we quickly look at the balance sheet, you'll see the reconciliation here. So we have the cost basis of the asset, 62,000. And the accumulated depreciation now is only 8956, right? The 8956 is the 6200. All right, so let me get the calculator out here just so you can see how this number works. So right, remember we paid, we had 6200 in straight line for 2019. Right, and then 2756 for the current period, 
$8,956 is the accumulated depreciation at the end of 2020. So that's the new adjusted amount. Okay. So um, I think that covers everything I wanted to discuss. Oh, one last note. Um, I don't know if I put it on the slide, but once, so once you go down this path of business use falls below 50%, the straight line method is now locked in. So even if next year the business use it, you know, goes back above 50, you don't reverse it again, right? You're stuck with it now. So the message here is, you know, be very careful. If you want to go down this path, right, of buying the property just at the year end so you can write the whole thing off, that's fine. This works. Um, I have clients that do this all the time, but you need to be very, very careful going forward, right? Just because you can do this in 2019 doesn't mean it's locked in forever. These are the recapture rules that you need to be mindful of. So um, go ahead and take advantage of the bonus depreciation if you can, uh, but in future tax periods, you still need to monitor the usage and do everything you can to try to keep it above 50 because if you drop below 50, you've got to deal with this recapture nonsense. So, uh, okay, so that covers it. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below and I look forward to seeing you again on the next video. Thank you.